Good afternoon, I'm Rianne Williams and we are on the Acoma Delta yacht in Cannes. In this 2018 edition, we're going to be covering four hot topics. The first, cryptocurrency and film finance. The second, the role of the blockchain in Hollywood. Thirdly, the future of VR. And finally, we're going to be discussing the future of film financing in the movie business. Good afternoon and welcome to Cannes Echo 2018. I'm Rianne Williams and with me today we have Nick Spanos, who's renowned as the godfather of Bitcoin. We have Dean Anastos, CEO of the Dionysus, and we have Luke Daniels, seasoned producer of over 60 feature films and CEO of Red Wire Pictures. Now guys, as everyone knows during this Cannes Film Festival, the buzzword, uh, the real hot topic of conversation is cryptocurrency and how that can be used to finance movies. Dean. Can you explain to us what all the fuss is about? Basically, uh, cryptocurrency is a new asset class, and it's being used as a vehicle to raise money through something called initial coin offerings, or ICOs. And that's particularly what we're working on. We have a, a blockchain project called Dionysus, Dionysus Studio, and we're using that as a vehicle to raise money for movies. The project itself decentralizes the aspect of raising money and the movie-making process, and that's what we're looking to do. Okay, and how would that work practically for the regular film producer who's looking to raise money? Well, a regular film producer can actually get a node that he can use that to create his own ICO for his own films. Okay, that's obviously something completely new right. to the film industry. We're dinosaurs. It's right. just not what we do. Luke is a veteran film producer of over 60 movies. Maybe you can just talk us through typically how will this revolutionary way of, of financing movies change things for you personally? How this will make it easier is is the platform will, the money will already be there. So right. it takes pre-sales and banks completely out of the equation. It could, it could, and that and that will make it a lot easier for guys and girls who can put it together mm. quickly and put a lot of people out of business. Hopefully, <laughs> Nick, as uh, the pioneer behind Bitcoin, how is this way of raising money? for a movie any different to typical crowdfunding? Everything that we've known in the past about how things have worked are changing in exponential fashion. I mean, the venture capital business is going to be obliterated, and it only took a year. In one year, ICOs have dwarfed what venture capital did this year. That only took one year mm. because everyone is so interconnected, especially holding a computer in front of them all day, meaning a smartphone is a computer. So things are happening much faster mm -hmm. than before. I remember when the internet came out, how long it took for everyone to get up to speed. Uh, all these other uh, producers who do not get on board are going to be dinosaurs mm. and, uh, you know, their leaves are going to get brown. <laughs> now, we've seen these sort of raises before. We've had audio coin, obviously, in the music business. So the... Film business seems a little bit slow to keep up with this, but you all know this, Luke. Earlier this year, the first movie financed by cryptocurrency called Braid featured at the Tribeca Film Festival. And it was the usual story where the producers couldn't get their film made because they were knocking around the studios, who's your star, who's your director, right. um, and hitting brick walls. The producers uh, issued an ICO and within two weeks raised the money for the movie, which in the film business is pretty unheard of. Within that framework, they had 30% set aside for these investors. I can see that being a template that's going to be used again and again. But ultimately, you still need that distributor at the end of the chain. Yes. So all it's doing is acting as a vehicle for investment that otherwise previously didn't exist. Correct. So I don't know if everyone, anyone in the industry wants to hear this, but that's what's going to happen. Well, look, um, as any independent producer will say, the hardest part of making a movie is raising the finance. Yeah. So if cryptocurrency can help, then I guess everyone's going to be all for it. Yep. So look, Nick, Dean, Luke, thank you so much for joining thank us you. this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. OK, so in our next roundtable, we're going to be discussing the blockchain and why it's going to revolutionize Hollywood. But in the meantime, we're going to have a brief one-to-one -one with Dean Anastas so we can talk in more detail to him about his new company, Dionysus. So I'm here this afternoon with Dean Anastos, who is the founder and CEO of a new company called Dionysus. Dean, 
Tell us about the company. So we're looking to basically decentralize uh, the movie making process. We're creating a platform called Dionysus that's going to allow people from around the world, anywhere around the world, to be part of this process. The uh, project up the platform where each individual project will essentially become an ICO. And then once that movie is funded and we approve it through the, that it is a viable project and we find distribution, would get the movie produced, and then people who participated with that would benefit from, through a smart contract. So we're talking about funding movies through cryptocurrency? Correct. Which is, at the moment, the real buzzword around uh, this Cannes Film Festival. Yes, absolutely. And where are you in the process? We're just opening our first round of the private sale, which is up to a $60 million raise. And where are you hoping to get to? Around 360 million. Do you see this as a business that's really going to shake things up in Hollywood? Yes, absolutely, because it's one of the most challenging things in, in the film industry is finance. Mm. So we feel like we're going to have that part covered. So if we have that part covered, all the projects are going to run through our platform. I mean, as a filmmaker uh, in the industry, always the hardest part is, is raising the finance. So if your company and cryptocurrency can help us achieve that, then all power to you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to Cannes Echo 2018. I'm Rianne Williams, and joining me at this afternoon's roundtable, Max Garza, CMO of Dionysus, Elizabeth Koshi, head of Invar Studios, John Nikos, who is creating Europe's first real estate-backed ICO. Now, today we're going to be discussing the topic, why the blockchain is going to revolutionize Hollywood. Max, let's start with you. Why is the blockchain going to change the way that Hollywood currently works? Blockchain is going to give people access like never before. Hmm. Imagine countries uh, where they're limited with banking infrastructure. But now because of blockchain technology, you're going to be able to fund movies faster, more efficient. And obviously what's also going to happen is now when movie projects come to the Dionysus platform, it doesn't matter where people are located geographically. We're basically borderless now because of the power of blockchain and digital currency. What you're saying is the blockchain can allow anybody anywhere to participate in that form of financing. Correct. How would those investors then realize their money? So as an example, let's say that he wanted to do a action film, right? And in that action film, let's say that the profits, uh, just an example, were $20 million. Mm -hmm. So now because people are staking their tokens within our platform, those people are going to be the ones that win massively when they get redistributed on a smart contract that literally is going to decrease fraud because like his address, her address, my address, all those profits will be distributed to those receive addresses within a smart contract. I think the key word is, was democratization mm -hmm. of uh, empowering individuals. Ultimately, studios might become unnecessary and not even part of the value creation chain because mm -hmm. um, you, you think about what a studio does, most of it is supplying financing, and the blockchain can completely replace that. And I'd also like to add over here that what's happening is Hollywood, this six or seven studios, they have so much of power. So what happens is they've got analytic, that's expensive data that producers cannot access. Mm. But now with this blockchain that Dynosis is doing, we actually can create analytics. Like, you know, it's data mining. I can access and I can fund a movie knowing that, okay, this genre movie made this, this was the low, this was the high, that type of data is now available to people. Yeah. As democratized. I, I would be interested to see how quickly the film industry adopts blockchain. Mm -hmm. If anyone had asked me last year who Satoshi Nakamoto was, I probably would have guessed he was the guy who played Mr. Miyagi in the Karate Kid. Yeah. All this is 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 new and it's innovative. Guys, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. It's been fascinating. And then our next round table coming up. We are going to be looking at the world of VR and production and distribution. And we'll also be having an intimate one-on-one -on -one with Joseph Wilson, the CEO of Kryptonite. Welcome. I'm here this afternoon in sunny Cannes with Joseph Wilson, who is the CEO and founder of a company called KTC, which is a high-end asset trading company. Joseph, tell us a bit more about your business. Kryptonite TradeCoin, or, or KTC, is a cryptocurrency 
that is utilizing blockchain and smart contracts in order to help our clients rid themselves of their assets that they don't want anymore, whether that is a, a luxury jet or a yacht or a home, uh, they don't want them anymore and they wanted to it's trade nice them to, to us. E yes, yeah, so some of them have the, you know, it's the fourth house or the, yeah. or the second yacht and they've tried to sell them and they haven't been able to. So they trade them to us and they accept our currency or KTC as payment. And that allows them to be able to then utilize that those credits to buy other luxury items. It also allows an individual who may not be quite yet high net worth mm -hmm. to be able to own a fraction of that mm -hmm. and utilize that asset and not have mm -hmm. to pay the full cost of it, mm -hmm. have to deal with all the other hassles of owning these uh, these yachts. And as we are here today, you see a lot of them that are in dry dock that are not in the water. <laughs> that costs money. We're the first cryptocurrency to have assets traded before our ICO. Is this happening now? We already have assets that are coming on board. They're pledging their asset. Our ICO will be July 15th. But all that is happening now. We have already acquired over $50 million in uh, high-end real estate. And what are you looking to raise? Looking probably 250 million. And James Bowen and I, the chairman of the company, have assembled a team of uh, yacht brokers, aircraft, luxury automobiles, blockchaindevelopment.org, and also one of our key advisors has over $7 billion in assets that his clients want to trade. It sounds exciting. Yeah. I, I wish you all the best with it. Well, thank um, you. And good luck. Thanks. Thank you. Good afternoon and welcome to CAMS ECO 2018. Our roundtable this afternoon is here to discuss production and distribution in VR. With me we have Salah Shana, who's CEO of the World VR Forum in Switzerland, Pierre Sandrovic, who runs Atlas V, and Mario Kenyon, an independent film producer. So Mario, VR has already been heavily promoted and invested in by the biggest tech giants on the planet. Your speciality seems to be in the sort of neuroscience area of this. How, how does that work? One of my friends very sick um, in about five seconds by putting a headset on him. Yes, I've been and there. And moving, yeah, mm. moving him for him. You could run. It was the Tuscany demo where you are in this beautiful villa. And from that point on, I was like, what is happening with our bodies, with our brain that understands this reality in a different way because if you get seasick, if you get car sick, that takes a long time, you know, 30 minutes out on the ocean. Sure. With this, it happens so quickly that you realize that the brain quickly responds to this type of format. So after that point, I did a lot of research, read a lot of books of neuroscientists who've been studying this for decades. And they've been trying to understand how the brain responds to this. And now we are able to kind of produce this for the masses. And to desperately try not to make people sick. <laughs> that's something that's sometimes fun. And if you can achieve that, it's <laughs> like, wow, how, we can do this with just you looking and hearing something. And then when you incorporate the other senses, that's yeah. a whole new level of immersion. No, I, I find it fascinating. But Salah, where do you see the industry moving over the next five to 10 years? And when you see those experiences that also are with full body presence, where you can see your legs, you can see your hands, this is another level and that's super powerful. I definitely see the industry going in that trend before having home devices being so popular. I mean, what's the, what's the challenge for content creators now going forward? I mean, PM, you can address that one for us. The, the last movie we produced, it's called Sphere. Uh, and the first episode is narrative by um, Jessica Chastain. Mm. So, you know, we had a lot of press. Also, it's co-produced with Darren Aronofsky. So this is a, the best way to, you know, people see names. It's like a real entertainment. Well, tell us about Spheres, because it's an interesting one. This was the movie that was bought by City Lights at Sundance early this year. Yeah, absolutely. So how significant was that deal to the VR business? It just... Um, shows us that uh, the market is coming and make money out of it. Now for VR creators and distributors, is it the same issue with funding projects as, as we have in the movie business? How do you overcome that? For now, it's really to uh, sell it first to the um, to, to channels. Uh, and also, as Salah was mentioning, we keep the, um, the rights for the LBE and then we sell it to like different uh, places around the world, like in China or in the US. 
In China, you have more than 3,000 uh, locations which open in about two months. So more are coming. In the US, you have the IMAX Center. In Dubai, you have a huge one. In Paris, you have MK2. So those locations are coming more and more. And as Pierre was saying, talent is really important in marketing because so many people still ask me, oh, you're in VR, so you're in IT. So no, I'm not an IT person. Is there more a take up in Asia and the Middle East than there is in Europe and, and the States? Not really. I think from my perspective, we're kind of at the same level. It's interesting because at I'm out of Los Angeles, and in 10, 20 years, everyone's going to be wearing glasses or doing AR and VR in a much easier format. Mm. But how do we get there? And that's kind of what we're all trying to figure out. That's the challenge. That's the challenge. Guys, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. Uh, it's been interesting um, and informative, and I wish you all the best of luck. Thanks. Thank you. So we're now going to move into our final roundtable on financing in the film industry. And we're also going to take a time out to meet Jim Packham uh, from Kubert, who is changing the face of insurance. Welcome to Cannes. I'm here with Jim Packham, who is the founder and CEO of a new company called Cover It. Jim, tell us a little bit about the company, where you're at, and what you're seeking to do. What we're looking to do is by bringing blockchain to the insurance industry to create a brand new concept of transparency. So what was it about the blockchain technology that, that really attracted you to bring that into the That's insurance right. industry? Uh, the insurance industry, uh, for many, many, many years, has been a dinosaur. Uh, it's certainly not in the electronic age that they can access the insurance market with the touch of uh, an app. And in addition to that, we promise to pay rather than here's a document that has exclusions and limits what actually you think you're being covered for. Promising to pay in the insurance industry. Jim, we should have you stuffed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds fascinating. When can an average member of the public uh, participate in this? So once the company is up and running, the idea is that we will have uh, an app called Cover It. And you just press the app. Easy to understand and exceptionally user-friendly. Well, Jim, that sounds like great news for the consumer. I hope you pull it off. Thank you very much. All the best with it. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, good afternoon from Cannes Eco 2018. The roundtable this afternoon is going to be talking about the exciting subject of film finance. And joining me, we have DJ Guggenheim, Rob Paris, and Jeremy Sim. So, Rob, you're a little bit more into the more disruptive ways of bringing finance to movies. Where is your model at at the moment? I'm still kind of waiting for the great, you know, application for the, you know, the blockchain, mm. for the crypto. I don't pretend to know a whole lot about it. Um, I know enough to be dangerous, basically. You talk a but, good game. But, yeah, is, <laughs> um, is, which is what CAN's all about, really. But I think that there's, the, from my perspective, what the greatest disruptive force of the, of the blockchain technology could be is to disrupt the a uh, hundred-year-old tradition of accounting practices that have been forged by the studios and where net participation is a, a completely non-existent entity. No matter how profitable a movie is, for some, somehow, some way, you're never going to achieve any kind of net profit. That's a good point. And so if there was a way to take the blockchain technology, which is as honest an accounting system that I've ever heard of that is literally repackaged every 10 minutes and solidified and reviewable by anyone who has access to it. So if we were able to take, for example, the programmers, maybe the Ethereum guys or some Bitcoin guys or whatever, integrate them with an entity like, say, Apple, right, and mm -hmm. iTunes, and be able to see exactly where the money is going and investors could, have, could know with certainty when their money is coming back and how much they're getting back and when they're getting it back. I think we would raise investor confidence significantly by doing something like that, and I think we could raise a lot more money than we're raising now. Um, <laughs> we can actually seamlessly move from that to you, Jeremy, running Aurora out of Singapore, a media investment company. Let's just go with what you guys actually look for 
So, so Singapore has been a player in financing. So we did a couple of huge blockbusters. Um, the money disappeared, burnt a lot of investors. Um, but it's all right. New money is being made in Asia all the time. So you'll have new stupid investors coming in. They get burnt once, you'll never touch it again. But that's not who we deal with. We deal with the more intelligent investors um, who want to build something more long-term and sustainable. If I could, you know, with film, which is I think why all of us love it, is because it's it's kind of like the nature versus nurture. It's art and science, you know, and it's trying to figure out what culturally resonates. What do you think as a producer is going to resonate with the culture? It's a dance. We've got a lot of chicken and egg situations, though, when we're looking at, at financing a movie. What we were talking about earlier with the cryptocurrency raises, the ICOs, that immediately gets you over that problem because the first movie that was financed by cryptocurrency, which was in Tribeca this year, they raised their money in two weeks. And that's unheard of in this business. Mm -hmm. So there's yeah. clearly something to be said for it. Do you think that that's going to create a lot of bad movies? This is one question, and it's an interesting one, and because that movie had no talent attached. And the issue is, where is it going to go? I think we're going to see a quality issue there, yeah. for sure. Um, because as an independent producer and former agent, you know, I, I understand sort of the rhythms of sort of getting the attention of very limited bandwidth individuals, stars. With crypto financing, uh, I think a lot more of those deals start to happen, where it's like, just get the guy, throw the money at him, mm -hmm. get the name. Is this script any good? I have no idea, but I have 600 Great million. Observation. Yeah, Great observation. Yeah, I have a 600 yeah. million dollar, you know, ICO, and I'm gonna bang out a bunch of movies, and they're, I have never even read a script. Let's go. Yeah. You know, so I think there's gonna be a real quality issue. Um, which is ultimately bad for the development of crypto as a, a real viable uh, source of financing, which I absolutely would want to see happen. Yeah. Uh, so, well, I'll tell you, I think of like the old model. There was a the company at Warner Brothers called Virtual Studios. See, we've all forgotten. At Warner's. Yeah. Wow. Do you remember this? No. No. Okay. How funny is that? They were at the same time, so a billion dollars in cash showed up at Warner Brothers, and Virtual Studios did not have a significant creative force. You know the way that you know Amazon went after Ted Hope and said, okay, we want yeah. that good machine kind of vibe. You know the the quality, right? And filmmakers, um, they didn't do that, and so Warner's kind of used them, I think, more as a piggy bank, and they did Poseidon which was a disaster in, on, on every level. And then I can I, I could rattle off the four or five or six other 100 million plus movies that they raided the coffers of that company. And it was out of business in, in two and a half years. $500 million, gone, evaporated. Okay, well, let's not adopt that model then. <laughs> okay, let's, let's finish up with bad finance and bad movies. Um, guys, I could talk to you all evening, which I probably will over a glass of rosé. Um, we're gonna wrap this up now, but thanks so much. <laughs> All right, next up, we're going to have a one-on-one -on -one with Matteo Leonardi from Culture Runners, who has a new VR movie called Reframe Saudi. Welcome to Cannes. I am sat here this afternoon with Matteo Lonardi, who just produced a VR series called Reframe Saudi. Matteo, talk us through what you've done here and, and, and where you're at. So Reframe is a series about social political issues through artists. And the second episode of the series is called Reframe Saudi, and it looks at the current change of Saudi Arabia. The clue, the concept of the series is that they are th thermometers of their society. The idea was to reframe this image through culture and through artists. And is it funded by individuals, by a group, by government so, grants? So this, the, the film is funded by Culture Runners, mm. which is a UK company, and the Miskart Institute, that is a Saudi uh, cultural institute. So it's a co-production. Yeah. I mean, in Cannes at the moment, Saudi Arabia and the various film funds and MBS, is sort of the, uh, the, the, the buzzwords um, I guess. Have you had a positive experience with them culturally? Well, I basically dealt with the foundation of MBS, the Miskart Institute. I must say that I had a very good experience. Mm. I was actually left to do whatever I wanted. And is this something they're looking to bring back into Saudi Arabia? Because obviously there's this yeah, push yeah. for Media City and uh, they're putting a lot of money into uh, film and content generally. What's the end goal with, with your film? Well, we had a preview screening at Art Dubai. Mm. It was huge. We had like 1,500 people in 
three days seeing the experience through mm -hmm. 10 headsets. So. <laughs> but listen, this sounds fascinating. I wish you all the best with it, especially here in Cannes. And I understand you're taking it to the, uh, the World, World VR Forum. Forum. Excellent. Well, good luck with it. I wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for watching Can Echo 2018. See you for the next one.